You alright there lads and lasses, Jackops here and welcome back to another GTA Online vehicle review. With the new Arena Wars DLC being made available to the public, this starts off Season 3 of GTA Online vehicle reviews. And what a better way to start off a new season than the HVY Scarab. This military class light tank is based off the How and How Ripsaw EV2. You can get this cute yet rusty Mad Max style vehicle for the undiscounted total of $3,076,290 or for the peasant and jeepskate in GTA Online. It can also be bought for the significantly lower discounted sum of $2,313,000. It does seem quite expensive so far, doesn't it? Well, we aren't done yet. We've got to show you what special features the Scarab has to offer as an Arena Wars vehicle. Unlike the Blimp's pretty useless special features back in the last episode of Season 2, the Scarab is quite a bit going for it. Although it's probably a biased comparison because of comparing one vehicle from an update about nightclubs to another vehicle from an update about crushing your enemies in an arena. Went a bit off track there, sorry about that. Anyway, the Scarab can be equipped not only just with standard mines, but every other type of mine available to most newly released arena war vehicles. As well as mines, it can also be equipped with a front plow, you know, so you can ram any slow cunts off the road. Finally, for the most unusual feature for a tank, it also has the ability to jump like the Ruiner 2000 and the Scramjet. The latter, by the way, I've also done a review on, check it out if you can. Obviously, as an Arena Wars vehicle, the Scarab can be fitted with Arena War type modifications. These can range from plows, cosmetic armour, decorations, and even different variants of the Scarab altogether. These variants include the Apocalyptic variant, which is the one I'm showcasing in this video, the Future Shock variant, and the Nightmare variant. With every new update bringing along another type of garage nowadays, this update is certainly no exception. The Scarab does require an Arena War workshop to get the most out of it. Mind you though, if you're too lazy to go through the Arena War career like me, the upgrades are expensive to unlock. The Scarab is also classed as a weaponised vehicle, so here you go, the Scarab's arsenal is just about to come up. The Scarab comes with a stock fixed 50 cal machine gun, a tad bit more powerful than your standard fixed vehicle machine gun, but not as good as a vehicle mounted minigun, obviously. To help you loosen off any tailgaters in the Arena and Free Mode lobby, the Scarab can be outfitted with one of the several variants of mine added with this update. Each mine carries out a different task, so it's better to research them and make an educated choice on which one's best for you. In the armour department, the Scarab is fairly mixed. It features armour capable of absorbing blast damage of up to 6 homing missiles. That's great and all, but just wait until you hear what I have to say about the windows. The windows are semi-bulletproof. This means the windows can take some volume of fire before breaking. But I may have spotted a bug here. As soon as you shoot through the window and start shooting the interior, the Scarab can catch fire within seconds. There is a way to help counter this, however. There is an upgrade that allows you to cover the windscreen with armour. This reduces the surface area of glass in the windscreen, which also means the driver is harder to shoot from the front. Will the Scarab's light tank classification assist it when it comes to a performance benchmark test? Let's race the Scarab against its closest rival, the Kanjali!
Bloody hell, the Khan jolly well and truly got its ass kicked there, didn't it? This helps show us the Scarab's overall performance. The Scarab is actually really fast for a tank. Also, because it's a tank, I'd imagine if you coupled its tracks with its respectable speed, it would be good off-road too. You could call this vehicle a cheater, as its time between being static and driving at its top speed, aka acceleration, is quite small. To help its already good stats, it features fast track movement. This allows the Scarab to move around tight corners quickly and smoothly. Here's something new, a pros and cons tab. It's pretty self-explanatory what this tab's for. The pros of the Scarab include good overall performance, a large variety of modifications and cosmetics, weaponizable, a nice amount of armor against rockets, and semi-bulletproof windows. With every vehicle comes its cons. These include a fixed front facing 50 cal turret, little bullet resistance once the windows have shattered, an arena workshop is required to modify the vehicle, upgrades are expensive if you don't have an arena wars career, and the base price is quite high. In conclusion, the pros and cons look fairly balanced when you just count them. However, you can't always make a choice based on numbers alone. When you examine the cons a bit more, you'll find out that the high base price is really the only significant drawback to the Scarab. Meanwhile, the only insignificant pro of the Scarab will probably be the cosmetics, which itself depends on the individual's preference. After careful consideration, I judge that the pros do outweigh the cons when it comes to the Scarab, meaning I would definitely recommend this vehicle and I'd rate it a solid 9 out of 10. Anyway, that's all I have time for today. If you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, subscribe and share this video. If possible, consider liking my Facebook page, follow me on Twitter, joining my Discord server and clicking the little bell icon for more notifications based on my latest videos. This is Jack Ops, signing off.